Last night I watched a copy of the Joseph Parker versus Irinu Bito Costa Jr. fight uh, that took place on the weekend. Regular viewers of my channel will know that I've covered Joseph Parker in a few fights and rate him as a prospect, but I think he's got a few frailties. I want to say that I was really, really genuinely impressed by his performance this weekend. I'll touch on the quality of the opposition in a minute, but I really, really liked what I saw from Parker. In my opinion, it was his best performance that we've seen in a professional ring by quite some way. Let me tell you why. We know Parker has attributes. We know he's a tall guy. We know he can box a bit. We know he's got a bit of power, a bit of hand speed. We know he's a well-rounded fighter. But that was really, really on show this weekend. The hand speed was evident from the second the fight begun. You know, the opponent, as I say, I'll come to the opponent, but the opponent was no world beater. But the difference in hand speed between the two of them was absolutely stark. Now, it wasn't just that Parker was punching quick, he was punching intelligently. His combinations were bang on. I loved the way he was working and the body. You know, his body work is already far more advanced than the vast majority of the heavyweight division. There are some notable exceptions, don't get me wrong, but Parker's combinations, how he drops to the body, how he's got that hand speed, is really, really spectacular. And I think he looked the sharpest I've ever seen him this weekend um, we also know he's got power and boy did we see that I mean this guy he's never been stopped Beto Costa he went 12 rounds with Christian Hamer who's rated very very highly by the WBO and on box rack went 12 round with with um, with Christian Hamer and you know gave the impression that he was a very tough durable guy which I'm sure he is but Parker caught him with a right cross and you know, it was absolutely lights out. He wouldn't have got up if he'd had a 30 count. You know, it was a real, real heavy knockout. And Parker showed us not only that he's heavy-handed, but he has genuine one-punch knockout power. You know, he took a big guy and he absolutely laid him out. Let's not forget, Parker's only 22, 23 years of old, something like that. As he grows older, as he grows into his build a bit more, because that does happen when you're a big man and, and that young he's going to be probably weighing slightly more coming into fights he's probably going to be hitting even harder so really really impressed you know the attributes were really there uh, the hand speed the body punching um, and that as I say not just heavy handedness but one punch knockout power yeah really really good my reservations about Joseph Parker have been twofold really one that he gets sucked into too much of a war and doesn't rely on his attributes and secondly that he's very defensively open and hittable let's not forget we've seen him cut badly in a fight before we've seen him caught by quite looping weak punches by Sermon Williams on multiple occasions and I did feel like he'd need to iron that out before progressing and this fight he's certainly moving in the right direction he boxed a lot more. His movement was was a lot better. He wasn't just standing in front of the opponent trading. He was jabbing his way in. We sort of double jab. You know, he, he fought a really, really intelligent fight. He, he boxed his way in. He used his pedigree. He used his range. He used his movement. Um, and then when he sort of softened the opponent up and worked his way in with the jab, that's when we saw the combinations. That's when we saw the body work. That's when we saw the hooks, uh, the uppercuts, you know. Some really, really nice shots being thrown. But he didn't just start with it. He worked his way in with movement, with the double jab. Um, and it was, you know, a vastly improved performance than we've seen from Parker in previous fights. Um, you know, based on that performance, you'd pick Parker over a lot of the current crop of heavyweights. He seems, to my eye, to be a far more dynamic fighter than other sort of Australian or... New Zealand heavyweights, you know, I know Lucas Brown, Callie Meehan, um, Alex Leopai, I know they're all big names over in that part of the world, but to me he seems to have a bit more snap. I know Big Daddy Brown is a big puncher, but you know, Parker's got that, but he's also got a bit more speed, a bit more variety to his work, a few more dimensions. I'm not sure 
you know, he's still very young. He still hasn't fought a genuine top-level opponent. So I'm not sure I'd go in that direction for his next fight. But he's starting to get to the level now with these performances. Where, whereas you'd start to be picking him over that guys, those guys, even at such a young age, because he really he is well-rounded. You know, he's got variety to his punches. He's got good combination work. He's got good boxing skills. You know, jab, movement, great hand speed, great power. In terms of areas for improvement, head movement, you know, there's scope for a bit more of that, certainly. I think he needs to be in with different opposition, though. I mean, the level of opponents he's been in with have been very, very good for essentially a 12-fight novice. Uh, you know, let's not criticise that. I think he's moved in the right direction with his, his more recent fights. What he hasn't faced is someone with you know, real desire. I did a video pre-fight for this Beto Costa uh, fight, and I, I did say that I'd watched that opponent face Christian Hamer recently. Uh, and, you know, he hadn't come to win whatsoever. I know he had an unbeaten record at the time, but he would very much left his native Brazil for the first time to box, come to Europe, and sort of covered up, tried to survive. Been very defensively minded, not offered much offensively. And I think this guy is... You know, the opponent Park was in with was a very much a guy who padded out his record with the intention of getting a few international paydays. He hasn't faced someone young who's really on their way to the top. And I know Lucas Brown isn't young, but he's an undefeated guy. He's got a real genuine ambition. And he hasn't faced anyone like that. Beto Costa was a taller opponent. He also, based on record alone, apparently had a bit more power. So... We're moving in the right direction. Where Beto Costa was very limited is his movement was non-existent. His jab was really, really poor. Uh, and he didn't really get the sense that he was coming to win. It was more the, the case of being an opponent again. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at this stage. Parker's very, very young. He's 12 fights in. As recently as his last fight, he was showing quite noticeable defensive frailties. And whilst I was very, very impressed by this performance, I don't think there's any problem with his next fight or two taking on the likes of uh, Kevin Johnson or Fraser Quendo. You know, these, these sort of low-volume defensive fighters who will give him more rounds. Because I think that will be very, very beneficial to Parker throughout his growth. Um, as I said, I'm really, really impressed by his performance this fight. Not only did he show all the attributes we know he had, but he, it was a much more composed, mature performance, the way he boxed himself in. He was caught a lot less. And, yeah, I, real, the most dangerous, most professional Joseph Parker I've seen, certainly. I noticed an article on Boxing Scene where his management team were talking about future opponents. Uh, there were three name men, m names mentioned. Christian Hamer, Bermain Stavern, and Ruslan Chigaev. Now, I notice with interest this is the first time they're sort of genuinely talking about putting him in putting him in with opponents who are top ten, top fifteen level. So it's clear that it's getting to the point now where they want to start making some serious money on him and putting him in with big, big, big opponents. The main Stavern, let's be realistic, he's got a mandatory against Deontay Wilder. If he comes through that, the biggest names in the heavyweight division will be looking to fight him. The money will be huge for Bermain Stavern. Bermain Stavern, Joseph Parker, is not a fight that can happen in 2015. Parker is at least a year away from that fight. Bermain Stavern is also far more dangerous um, than anyone Parker's been in with. He's another one I quite rate, Stavern. Uh, I don't see that fight as realistic. I view that as more an attempt to hype Parker's name. The other two opponents, possibly more likely. Ruslan Chigayev, the WBA regular title... Again, he's a man a lot of people want to fight because he's got that regular belt. Now, the question is, does he need to fight Joseph Parker? Are there not bigger names and bigger paydays out there? Would there not be cues around the block of people looking to fight Chigayev because he's got a version of the title and he's seen as an easy mark? Chigayev is quite a sort of slow, one-paced, plodding fighter. He's quite a route one guy for a world champion. 
you know, there's going to be lots of fighters out there who fancy their chances against him. And I don't know whether Joseph Parker is high profile enough or if he brings enough money to the table and glamour to the table as of yet to attract Chagayev. I probably would pick Parker over Chagayev based on last week's performance, however. The other name, Christian Hamer, is an interesting one. Hamer is rated very, very highly. Uh, sixth by the WBO. I think he's the WBO European title. Rated exceptionally highly on box rec as well. He is a guy I've watched a few times and view is very, very limited. Uh, you know, an example would be that this uh, Beto Costa guy took Hamer 12 rounds very, very recently, whereas Parker destroyed him in four. I think Christian Hammer is a very, or Hammer or Hamer, however you pronounce it, is a very, very easy mark for such a highly rated heavyweight. In my opinion, he's the worst fighter in Boxrex top 15 heavyweights. And I would pick Parker over him. I think Parker's got, you know, skill sets, talent, sort of raw attributes well above and beyond anything that Hammer brings to the table. And I think that would be a very, very interesting matchup. The problem is, Christian Hamer's very highly rated himself. He seems to be moving in the direction of the top 10. Is he going to step back and take that risk against a young guy like Parker? I don't know. I don't know. But of those three, I think Hammer's the most realistic. As I say, big names in Australia. Kali Meehan, I know he's had some big wins recently. Um, I know Leah Pai has lost a few, but you know he's still got a big name out there. And obviously Lucas Brown. So we'll see who he gets matched up with next. In terms of where I'd be taking him, as I say, whilst I was exceptionally, exceptionally impressed how he took a, took care of business this weekend, I'd still have a slight nagging doubt in my head about how hitable he was against Sermon Williams. Um, and I think given his age and given the fact that there isn't necessarily any urgency in rushing him because he's still so young, I'd be more inclined to face a Kevin Johnson. I know Johnson's scheduled to fight Joshua, but that kind of guy. Some guy who should go rounds. Some guy who is quite technically capable, but a guy who's low volume, doesn't necessarily come to win. And, you know, more of a learning experience yet for, for Parker. I'd say if he fights Hammer, Chigaev, Stavern. Brown, Leah Pai, you know, these are guys who are going to come to win. These are guys who are going to come and try and beat him. And I don't think he's really been with an opponent so far who's got the genuine belief that they're going to beat him. And that's a big game changer in a fight, in my opinion. But really, really impressed by Parker. Um, not the biggest heavyweight out there compared to the likes of Fury, Klitschko, Wilder, etc. But possibly with some of the most advanced hand speed, possibly with some of the best body punching. And certainly competitive in the power stakes. Be fascinated to see where he turns up next. Let me know your thoughts. Many thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Boxing Gossip.